morning, good morning. All right, let's press in, let's press in. We excited about the word this morning, get comfortable, come on, press in, get comfortable, find a place to sit. Tell somebody, tell the person next to you, I'm glad you came today. Amen. Tell them you look good in this church. <laughs> All right, everybody comfortable? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, God, that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. And so we thank you for your sweet presence in this place, Lord God. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah, that you're Yahweh, that you are the great I am, that you are mighty, that you're counselor, that you're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we lift you up this morning. We ask you to have your way in this place, Lord, that you would break ground, that you would break dry ground, that you would plant your seed today, God, that your word would get a hold of us, that it would transform us, that it would reach us and bleach us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys nice and comfortable? All right. Stand up for the reading of the word. Amen. The word of the Lord, Ephesian, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Ephesians 5, 6 through 11. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. The word of the Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want you to notice there that Paul says in Ephesians, we were once darkness. Now we were in darkness, we were once darkness. Amen. <laughs> See, when we're living apart from God, when, we, when we're not reconciled with God, when we don't have a relationship, when we're not in right standing with God, we are the darkness. That's harsh, right? But we are, we're not in darkness, we are the darkness. And then it says, when, once we reconciled with God, it says now, you're not in the light, you are the light. You are the light. Come on. It's not time to go to sleep. Let's wake up. Come on. You are the light. Matthew 5.14. You can lower these monitors, please. Matthew 5.14, it says, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So, so you, you, you guys know where we're at. Paul, we, we said before, Paul told Timothy, in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and they will follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And if you point out these things to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus. And now we read in, in Ephesians, Paul told Ephesians, live as the light and expose the darkness. Amen? Amen? Expose the deeds of darkness. I started this message three weeks ago to catch a thief. To catch a thief because I wanted to do what, I, I, I wanted to do what these scriptures are saying. We need to expose what the deceiving spirits and what the demons are teaching people. And we need to bring it to the light. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we've been looking at world religions for three weeks. We've been, because like I said, I don't believe God gave us religion. And so if God, if religions did not come from God, then I want to show you where they originated from. And, and I want you to understand who, why, and what they're accomplishing and who they're serving. Amen? You with me? 
So today, part three of this message, to catch a thief. And I believe, amen. (laughs) I believe that as we examine these religions, listen to me, religion is the biggest trap that the enemy has ever set for us. And I think it's time we started walking as children of light, amen? But we can't do that while we're holding on to the idols of our culture. And we, we can't shine while we're still leaning on the gods that have been in our family for years. Tradition. We, 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 we choose not to be under God's protection when we have a saint behind the door at our house. Or a candle or a glass of water or a broom, whatever your culture or tradition says to do. We can't be under God's protection. We choose to be out from under God's protection and his covering and his anointing when we add extra to God. When we say, God, we need you and more. We were singing this morning, we need more. And by the way, I needed that worship this morning. Praise God. I needed that. We, we can't say, God, we want more, and, 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 and by that mean, that means I not want more. I want God, and I want San Lazaro, and Yemayai, and this. Child. No, I need God. I need more of God. Amen? So just to kind of catch you up, to let you know where, we, where we're at, because listen, I don't want to see another kid in this place with an amulet or a good luck charm in their jewelry. I don't want to see I don't want to see another post from anyone in this family about what their stinking horoscope says. I, I don't want to see it from anybody in here. I don't want to hear of another person in this family falling away because they're listening to deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. We've been exposing that junk for 3 weeks. And 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 I believe we're we're getting to the place where we are you are theologians. You understand? You're not just Bible goers. You're not just people that sit in church on Sunday. You learn something. I believe if you've been paying attention for the last three weeks, and if you missed it, you could get them online. Just listen to them. If you listen to that, if you pick that up, I believe you are now a theologian. You're studying the Word of God. And you're studying and you're understanding the things that are around. You're understanding what we believe and you're understanding what's being taught. Amen? And so when you hear about how some of these religions got started like what we've been doing, then you see the folly that that for what it is. When you hear that they believe that Jesus is Satan's brother or that Jesus is, is, is not the only begotten son of God but an angel in the flesh, then you cannot continue becoming a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon. Once you understand that, you cannot continue with that. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Because it contradicts the word. It contradicts itself. I think it's funny how so many religions say, you could read Jesus. Jesus was a good prophet. No, you cannot. The the, the Quran says that Jesus was a good prophet. You cannot accept that Jesus was a good prophet. Because if you read the Gospels, Jesus thought he was God. So either he's a lunatic or he's Lord. You you got me? So you can't add him. You can't say, yeah, no, Muhammad and Jesus. You cannot. Jesus thought he was God. He said, I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the I am. Only God said he's the beginning and the the end. Only God says in the Old Testament, he's the Alpha and the Omega. How many Alpha and Omegas can we have? We can only have one beginning and one end. Amen? So, So Jesus can't be a good prophet. Either he's crazy or he's God. It's just this, the, so once you understand that, you, then you can't follow Muhammad. Then you can't be a part of the nation of Islam. Because when you understand that the spirit of this word, that the, this, in, in the spirit world, there are the Lord's angels and there are demonic angels. There's the, the Lord's angels and there's fallen angels or demons. And the, when, when you get in your head that our spirits, when we die, they don't roam around aimlessly protecting us, the, Titi grandmother's protecting me in the spirit. No. When you understand that, that your titi and your grandma and your grandpa, I'm sorry to be harsh again, but when you understand that they're not protecting you, they're not looking over you, I'm sorry. But the word does not teach that. So when you understand that they're dead, they're past. And so they can't, then you can't pray the dead saints. Then you can't pray the dead people. Then you cannot be in, uh, remain Catholic. Because you can't pray to saints. 
You understand? Once these things click in you, then you start to say, wait, wait, wait. Uh, whoa. And your eyes start to be open. Somebody say amen. amen. If you understand, you can't pray to dead saints and dead people. You can't be an espiritista. You can't be a santero. Because you're not speaking to dead people. You're speaking to demons. When you understand that you're dealing with demons and dealing with deceiving spirits, when you're meeting with psychics and tarot cards and Ouija boards and spirit mediums, then you start to say, wait a minute, I got to leave that alone. I got to leave that alone. I thought I was talking to Titi something. But if I'm talking to, I better leave that alone, amen? Amen. When you understand that meditating and emptying your mind and repeating chants and prayers, they're not bringing you peace. They're invoking demonic influence. Then you start to leave that junk alone. Amen? Listen, there are so many more traps, and we can't possibly go on and on and on further because the deeper that we go in, the more traps we'll find. And we can waste an entire season of our lives exposing these traps when we could be learning more truth. Amen? Listen, I, I believe, you know, we're doing this right now for a couple of weeks because I feel it's so important. But I would rather feed on scriptures. I would rather share the gospel. I'd rather share the word. I'd rather be reflecting on biblical passages. Because you know what? That feeds us. That feeds me. But listen, I, I understand and, and I'm suffering through this because I know that this is necessary. Although it is difficult. This is a struggle. This past week, as I was researching and preparing, I started to feel so empty. I've been researching and in these websites and doing this research for, for three weeks now. And this past week, it was, I was a few hours in, and I was studying on what I needed to expose. And, and I, I'll be honest, I had to turn on some worship music. I just started feeling so empty. I started feeling so lost. I started feeling so hopeless. And I realized this is what people feel. When, when this is what the, all they have, and, this, and they're just trying to get ahead and press and this, and this is what people feel, and that's why they're so empty. That's why they're so lost. I started to feel that, and I had to, I, I had to put on some worship music to just fill me up again so I can continue this, amen? This stuff is not what you want to be looking at for hours and hours. There's some really, when you look into the darkness, there's some ugly stuff. You find some really ugly stuff. But what I want to do today, I want to shine a light on some things. Amen? And, and I want to show you how it touches each and every one of us today, no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing. I'm going to show you how some of this touches each and every one of you. You interested? I want to go after this one in particular because this one, it gets me angry because it's been going after our children for years. This trap... Dates back, they say, before Christianity. But back in 1997 and in 98, there was an author that came out with a series of books. The author's name is J.K. Rowling. Mm. What's the series of books? Harry Potter series. How many of you got the whole Harry Potter series? How many of you got the whole library in your house? You got the movies and books. Come on, raise your hands. Put it in the avatar pile. <laughs> Some of you smart. You're like, how many? You're like. How many you watch the book? I know it's a trap. <laughs> listen, listen. Before you get defensive and start getting offended, I, I don't care if you like those books. I don't care if you read all those books. It kind of amazes me that people are reading thousand-page books but can't read a passage of Scripture. But, but I don't care. That's your business. That's between you and God. I, I, like I told you in the beginning of this, I'm not here to be legalistic. I'm not here to lay anything down, any laws for you. I'm not here to tell you what you can and can't do. It cool? I'm not here to tell you none of that mess. That's between you and God. Side note, though. If you go on her website, jkrowling.com, and you look around for yourself, you'll find some pretty interesting stuff there. I did a little bit of research. I don't want to waste a lot of time in there because that's not really what I'm getting into. But 
I found that she had a partnership with Sony and PlayStation 3 last year. And they came up with Pottermore, an interactive website, Pottermore.com. I went to Pottermore.com. It's an online experience called Wonder Book, the Book of Spells. To quote from the website, it's an enchanted book that brings spells to life around you with spell descriptions and stories from the wizarding world. I spent three minutes on the website, and I found that as a kid, I can create an account, and then I can brew potions and cast spells. Online, as I, let me quote the website, challenge other students to wizard duels, master curses, to master jinxes, to master hexes, and experience it all for free. Somebody say, praise God, the devil gives it away for free. That's not even my issue, but, but I want you to understand. Look how it lets you play online. Watch. It tells you, I, I clicked on it, cast a spell. Okay, how do you cast a spell? Well, I had to create an online thing, but I didn't go through all that, but I just wanted to go through because I wanted to talk from experience. I don't want to just make things up. And I want you to understand, I'm not just getting stuff from Christian websites who talk bad about everybody. I'm going and I'm experiencing, I'm doing research. You understand? I'm talking to the actual people. I'm, okay, so to, to click a spell, check this out. You, you, once you get in a duel with somebody to click a spell with them, it tells you the, the, letters, on your, the letters on the screen are going to light up. And you click, whoever clicks the first letters quick enough, what, what, what is it doing? It's lighting up letters. Are you paying attention to what you're spelling? No, it's a speed thing, right? It's just saying, it, it could be saying S-A-T-A-N, Satan saves. Uh, it, it could be saying anything because you're just pressing keys to go fast. You're casting spells on your friends. How many want your children doing that? Praise God. Okay, but that's not even my issue. That's not even my issue, believe it or not. What I want to talk to you today about is Wicca. How many of you heard of Wicca? How many of you watched the Housewives of, which is that one? The Housewives of Beverly Hills, right? Come on, don't front. You guys watch Housewife shows. There's a housewife on there now who's a Wiccan, right? And so that housewife is a Wiccan. What is that doing now? It's just kind of. You know, putting it out there to let, you, let people experiment and see a little bit. Now, the reason I'm connecting this Harry Potter to Wicca is because after this set of books was released, the internet blew up with searches from kids on spells, witches, and incantations. And all of a sudden, the libraries and bookstores, they couldn't stock enough books for kids on witches and wizardry. What it did was it opened the door and it removed the stigma of witchcraft to us. It made it appear normal. Amen? It made evil appear good. Now, right after that door was open, it made way for other things to pop up and be accepted. In 2003, an author named Stephanie Meyer... Oh, some of you felt that low. I heard that. You went, mm. he's not going to go to the Twilight series. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I knew I should have stayed home today. Dang, man. <laughs> Stephanie Meyer, a Mormon. Oh, did you know that? Stephanie Meyer, a Mormon. By the way, it doesn't say it on her website. I went on her website. All it says was that she graduated from BYU. That's there. <laughs> so she doesn't say she's a Mormon, but she graduated from their university. That's only for Mormons. 
She had a dream in 2003 that was different from any dream she ever had. She quickly started writing because, because she said that, that these two voices in her head kept speaking to her. And she had to quickly start writing what was coming to her. Bella and Edward were literally voices in her head, she says, as she wrote the book. Even though it was her first book, she wrote the entire book in three months. And had a brand new baby that wouldn't let her sleep and had other children. She was a housewife. So with all these kids in the house, with a brand new baby, she wrote a book in three months. You go try to write a book in three months. A book that's not a little book either. It's not a pamphlet. Not like the little books I like to read. It's the books that you guys like, you know. Them. She wrote it in three months. She says that at times she couldn't keep up. She couldn't type fast enough with the voices that were giving her in her head. Sometimes she said because, you know, she was awake with the kid and blah, blah, she couldn't get to the computer. So she would just scribble on a piece of paper and like the words would just come. And she says she used to, she used to be excited to go in the morning to read what she scribbled in the dark. You, you, deal, you deal with that. The Twilight series is a case of Satan playing good demon, bad demon. Are you team Edward or are you team Jacob? Think about it. Satan says, either way, I win. Either way, I win. Is it the undone, undead vampire or the undead werewolf? Still both undead, still both immortal, still both all against biblical, still witchcraft, still, still discerning, still familiar spirits, still, still everything against the Bible says still. So Satan says, pick team Edward, pick team Jacob. Amen. Either way, I win. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Isaiah 520, though, says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. MTV News says Wicca is one of the fastest growing religions because of all these shows and books among 10 and 17 year olds. And so now there's a, a boatload of, of, of uh, authors and publishers attacking and targeting this age range and creating witches out of them. Your kids, your youth. There's a book out there now called Spellbound. That's a teenage witch's Wiccan handbook. How many of you can't wait to find that in your, in your kid's room? It's written by a British astrologer about white witch spells. White witch spells. Remember, we, we dispelled this nonsense yesterday, last week, right? There's no such thing as white magic and black magic. I was in Espiritismo. I worked the Mesa Blanca. I'll tell you straight up what it is. There is no such thing. The occultists will tell you there's no such thing. Satanists will tell you there's no such thing as white magic. It's all magic. It's magic, okay? The Bible does not mention anywhere that only white magic is good and the other witchcraft is not acceptable. Nowhere. It says, do not consult with mediums and spirits and necromancers and sorcerers. None of them, because none of them is good. Amen? Okay, we made that clear already. Okay, but so check this out. This book, why would, it, why would a kid, why would this interest a kid? Well, there's spells in this book like catch a boyfriend spell. Some of you singles are like thinking about picking up that book. Stop it. <laughs> There's pass a test spells. There's unground me spells. They get back at my parent spells. All of these things they could read, and then it teaches about candles and cards and crystals. And all of these things they read... In these books and in these Harry Potter books, it, it's all in good fun. It's not evil. It's not demonic. It's not unbiblical. It's not offensive to God. It's not a trap of the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's all good fun, right? 
So everybody starts to jump on. And in 2003, Mattel came out with Secret Spells Barbie. What? You think I make this up? Mattel put out a Wiccan Barbie doll, Secret Spells Barbie. Here's the quote from the website. Comes with potions that you can make and actually drink. Merry Christmas. Here's a doll and a demon to follow you for free. $19.99 for the doll. The demon is yours forever for free. Entertain him and he'll bring friends. It's the gift that keeps giving. It's blatant. It's open doorways, church. We need to wake up. Amen? We need to wake up. Oh, oh, come on, can we, can we put a light on or something? Come on, come on. Can we put it on? Are you getting it? Are we turning on some lights? Amen? So what is Wicca? Okay, thanks for asking. Wicca is a religion of nature worship, which means they're pantheistic. Remember we taught that? They're people that are pantheistic, believe that the nature is divine, divine is everyone, divine is the earth. So they, they get called tree huggers a lot because the trees are God and everything. Nature is God. However, they are also, there's seven different kind of versions of Wicca because they originated in different places, right? And so they're also duotheistic. What does that mean, duotheistic? They have two gods, right? They worship a mother goddess and a horned god. Now, do I really got to shine a flashlight to let you know Mother goddess and a horned god. Why, why, why your god has horns? <laughs> that, don't, that, don't, that don't tell you something? Why, why your god has horns? He's a horned god. You don't got a problem with that? So, so before the 70s, listen, before the 60s and 70s, it was called what it was. It was called witchcraft. It was called the craft. Now we got slick with it, and it's Wicca. It's something cool. Wicca means witch. Don't let nobody tell you different. Witchcraft dates back before Christianity, and that's why we can read all about it throughout the Word of God. As a matter of fact, when people started hearing the gospel and seeing the power of God, when in the book of Acts, when Christianity, when, when, when the disciples started preaching, the Holy Spirit came and disciples started preaching and people started getting saved. Look what happens. Acts 19, 18. It says, many of those who had believed, they kept coming and confessing and disclosing their practices. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. That's Christianity. Because this dates before. So when people started getting saved, they started saying, I got to bring my beads to and burn them. I got to bring these books and destroy them. I got to bring all my witch, my book of shadows, my book of spells. I got to bring them all and, and burn them. And so they were burning them in public in front of all the other Christians. Somebody say, praise God. Maybe we need a burning ceremony. I, listen, I'll do anything it takes to get somebody free. So, so when Jesus came and the light was turned on for them, they saw the wickedness in their practices and they started burning their magic books. So listen, when you research this Wicca thing, the biggest thing you read about them is that they're always being accused of being Satanists. And they get so mad because we're not Satanists, they say. We're not Satanists because we don't believe in Satan. We don't believe there is a Satan. We don't believe there is absolute evil. So they don't worship the devil. We have a mother goddess and a horned god. They don't believe there's a heaven, there's a hell. They rely on the Hindu and Buddhist practices of karma and reincarnation. When they die, they go to a place called Summerland. Like, who makes this up, man? Like, where do they get this? Somebody say Summerland. Yeah, that sounds good. So when we die, we go to Summerland. And in Summerland, there's peace, there's whatever, whatever. And then they come back and get reincarnated again. And they have a saying that's once a witch, always a witch. So they'll get reincarnated as a witch again and again and again. They believe in a divine power that they call the one. But the only ones they interact with is the god and the goddess aspect. It's more than 70% women in Wicca. 
because it's a very feminist, strong presence, and so that, you know, feeds that other desire. Depending on the type of Wicca, their initiation ceremonies, this is important, you got to hear this, to join the coven. A coven is a group of witches, right? You guys know this because you watch all these movies, right? So to join the coven, there's an initiation ceremony. There's three degrees to the craft, right? So there's three degrees in witchcraft. There's three degrees. The, to become a third degree, Wiccan involves the great rite. Guess what the great rite is? Cover your kids' ears if anybody's here. In the great rite, they draw a, a circle with a pentagram in it, but they're not satanic because this is a pentagram, five-point star, that means the moon, the sun, the earth. It does not mean the horned god that they use in Satan, Satanism. But it's a pentagram with a circle, and they enter the pentagram and the circle, the great priest and a high priest, and they proceed to have intercourse as they invoke and get possessed by the mother goddess and the horned god. Yeah, this is getting raw, right? I, I know. I, you, I'm just putting on the light. I want you to know what's behind it, amen? I don't want you to think it's pretty and, you know, oh, they, they're good people. They just hug trees and they love nature. No, it's a little deeper, okay? So now, listen, now many modern covens, they're not as established, and so they don't have all the rituals that are read in places. And so they can do self-initiations into the coven, one of the self-initiations that I read was most common. When people want to dedicate themselves to Wicca, they say the Lord's Prayer backwards. But wait a minute, we're not Satanists. We don't believe in God. We don't. So why are we saying the Lord's Prayer backwards? You dedicate to, to yourself to witch. It's a symbol of defiance to the witch burnings of the Great Inquisition in the 1400s, they say, which, by the way, was done by a Roman Catholic pope, Innocent VIII. It wasn't done by Christians, but that's their animosity toward Christians because Christians burn witches, they said. So every coven has their book of shadows. Listen, this is where it's going to get crazy. Lean in, lean in. <laughs> if you think it didn't get crazy yet, this is where it's going to get crazy. Every coven has a book of shadows, and this book of shadows is a collection of spells. It's a collection of incantations and rituals. This book of shadows has been taken from various sources, but one major influence for this book of shadows was Aleister Crowley. Remember that name? We're going to go there in a minute. The Wiccan code, their creed, is that it harm none, do as thou wilt. Okay? So that's the Wiccan creed, that it doesn't harm anybody, do anything you want. As long as you don't harm people, do what you want. Do whatever feels good, do as thou wilt. That is the Wiccan creed. Here's where we get really crazy. Pay attention, because I'm going to bring this all the way from there, all the way back to us right now and where we are, how it connects and affects me and you. Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was titled the most wicked man on the earth. He was born to a wealthy evangelical family. He rebelled against everything they believed. And when his father died, he inherited all this money. He traveled around the world. His mother labeled him the Beast 666. And he loved that title. He used that, own, that title. Everywhere he went, he studied their religion and he invoked their gods in defiance of Christianity. So Crowley became a 33-degree Freemason. I'm not even going to get into that. Once he was in Egypt, he, his, main, his main deity that he loved to worship was the Egyptian god, the Eye of Horus. You guys may be familiar with the Eye of Horus and how that connects to us today, but we're not going to go there right now. That's where we get the all-seeing eye. You should, give me that image, uh, boy, boy Koto. Bam, the all-seeing eye. Listen, go shopping today, go to any clothing store, and tell me if you will not find one pair of, of pants, a shirt uh, with this symbol on it. It's, once your eyes are open to this stuff, you see it everywhere. Everywhere. I was in one, I went to two stores with my daughter on Friday night, and I said, look, and look, and look, and look. Six, like six shirts, upside down crosses. Well, the eye of Horus on every 
piece of clothing that was in the store. It, it, it was disturbing already. Okay, we'll take that off. So his first wife, his first wife, this is Alistair Crowley. His first wife saw this apparition and she started screaming. This was in Egypt when they were visiting in Egypt and he was worshiping Horus that eye. And she started screaming and she said, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. And so he, he's not one of those that get scared. He loves the occult. So he went back to the hotel room and he started invoking that spirit. He started calling on the deity Horus and an angel, by, by the way, his first and second wives both went insane and died in mental hospitals. Five of his mistresses committed suicide. And he left a, a, a boatload of girlfriends who ended up in gutters as heroin junkies and, and all kinds of drug addicts because he did heroin and cocaine and every drug he can get a hold of everywhere he went. From every, from Japan, from China, from, from Egypt. So this man, he would travel addicted to heroin, addicted to everything, and he would, get, he would do these rituals that I can't even mention here. He would do rituals that I, I can't even talk about because they're so disgusting. So vile. He got himself thrown out of countries for the stuff that he would do in his rituals. So you can imagine. One of, he bought this huge house in Scotland, which became the temple for the religion that he started called Thelema. Religion never took off, but he still had this major impact on the world. Watch. He was thrown out of that country because of the things they discovered that he was doing there. One of his magic writings said he believed the best sacrifice was innocent little boys. So I'll leave it at that. You can imagine. So when his wife saw that vision, he realized it was a supernatural visitation. He went to his room. He invoked the deity of Horus. And, and the deity sent him an angel named Awas, who spent three days with him and gave him by automatic writing. Automatic writing is when you channel a spirit and you let a spirit take over you and you just write. Um... What was that book that we were talking about? Twilight got written. Automatic writing. You just write. You let the spirit write through you. You just go like this and you write. So he spent three days with this angel, giving him all the words to this book. That became his, the book of the law. That book of the law, the main theme, the main creed for that book of the law is do as thou wilt. Is the whole extent of the law. What was the Wiccan creed? As long as you harm no one, do as thou wilt. Make the connection with me for a minute. So you see, the law of the enemy has always been do anything you want. You don't have to listen to what God says. His first trap to Eve was, did God really say you can't eat of all these trees? Did God really say you can't eat of all of this stuff? And then she said, no, yeah, she said we can eat from everything, but not that one. If we eat from that one, we will die. And what was, what was the enemy's next words? Surely you won't die. Surely you're not going to die. It's always been do what you want. Do what he wants. Amen? Now listen, you would think someone as disgusting and perverse as this man would not have a following. But you have to understand the dark forces that are at work here. Many famous and influential people down to, into our days, and I'll get there in a minute, followed this guy and still follow him today. How many of you, this is going to date some of you. We're going to get you back, see who's, who's a little older. But how many of you knew Led Zeppelin? Okay, there's, a, there's, a, there's some. Remember Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. He was the guitarist. He followed Crowley so passionately that he bought the house in Scotland where Crowley did all these rituals. Now, he... He used to do magic rituals during Led Zeppelin concerts. Their most famous song, Stairway to Heaven, was actually given to him through automatic writing by the demon in that song. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, loved Crowley. You're like, why? How, how can this? Research it for yourselves if you don't believe me. They put his picture on their album. Remember the Sergeant Heart? Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band, they did an album, had all these faces. Alistair Crowley is one of the faces on that cover. John Lennon had an interview, do what thou wilt as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, he says. Does that sound familiar? David Bowie, Bowie he refers to Crowley in one of his songs. Daryl Hall of Hall of Notes, he followed him and has a signed copy of his book. Sting followed his teachings. Mick Jagger studied Crowley. How can this wicked man have so much influence over people? Let's bring it closer to home. Marilyn Manson 
has a song dedicated to Crowley. Ozzy Osbourne followed Crowley. He wrote a song, Mr. Crowley, where he says in the song, you waited on Satan's call and you fooled people with magic. Crowley taught in his book, Magic Theory, the art of reversal. Crowley believed that the church of Satan, he should, they should learn how to write backwards. And so in, the, in any gathering of the church of Satan, they often start by reciting the Lord's Prayer backwards. How does that connect to Wicca? But Wiccans are not Satanists because they don't believe in Satan. Did you catch the thief there? If you don't believe he exists, then you don't have to guard against him. You got me? The trap in Wicca and in many world religions is that the enemy does not exist. How does this affect us today? Where else is that influence? How is it coming to our children and affecting our culture and our society? How is this Crowley and Wicca and all this affecting you and me today? Well, listen, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Do what thou wilt. How, how does that connect? Are you kidding me? How, am I making this up? Are we putting the light on on somebody? Are, 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 you, are you getting something? Uh, amen? I know, I know. I know this, these messages are a little different. We're not, you know, studying parables, and I love doing that. We're going to get back to that. But, but I, I think we, need to, we needed to grow up for three weeks, and we needed to be exposed to some things that are ugly. And I needed you to see some things. Because, because, because listen, listen, you could come here and listen to a message for 45 minutes, an hour. you can have an hour of worship, awesome. But when you leave here, you spend every day, some of you, with hours and hours of headphones in your ears. And, and it ain't Pastor George preaching to you. And it ain't Pastor Ephraim singing to you. It's, you got Pastor Jay-Z. You got Pastor Kanye. You got Pastor Ciara. You got Pastor Rihanna. You got all these pastors preaching to you all week long. And then you come and get a little message from me on Sunday and think you're going to be good. <laughs> Give me, show me some of the other images because we're gonna let's let's expose them all. What the heck? Oh, what's this? What's this? That's the Baphomet, the goat head. Kanye thinks it's cool to just rock that on a t-shirt. That's the devil head. That's a satanic symbol, rocking on a t-shirt. Look at his sweatpants. Are you serious? Look, a pentagram and the goat head. This, this clothing line is JDK clothing line. These sweatpants cost $300. A t-shirt is $400. A hoodie is $700. And, and they all have a, a satanic symbol on them. And everybody's wearing them. Give me more. Give me more. Everybody's wearing them. Who's that? Rihanna. KTZ clothing. This outfit, you're going to see this outfit has, I mean, tons of satanic symbols all over it. But let's see who else is rocking this outfit. Oh, Adam Lambert, same outfit. Are you serious? Don't put your heads down, man. It's all right. American Idol is called American Idol for a reason. Give me another one. Oh, who's this guy? Big Sean. Or something. I don't know half these guys. But look, same outfit. just underneath a shirt. Same shirt. Give me another one. Who's this? Um... ASAP, 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 Rocky, whatever, I don't know. You laughing at me or you laughing at him? Whatever. Next. Give me another one. Oh, no. She's wearing the same shirt. Can't be. She's Hannah Montana. Let's go on. Move on. Move on. Who's this? Theophilus or somebody. I don't know. Some of you know these rappers. Same shirt, go, same company, KTZ. Kesha, what a darling Kesha. Give me that other picture of Kesha in her video. Where in this video, she sells her soul to Satan, she says. Satanic star. There's another one where her bodyguard has a, has a and, and, he's, and he has the same satan. This is the music that we listen to every day. Give me some more. We got more stuff there? Oh, yeah, look, this is the one. Go back. 
This is the one. Look, his, he's, in a, he's, a, he's a dead guy, and he has the satanic star, and that's her. She's singing um, um, Good Die Young. We all got to die young. Give me, give me the other one you had. Oh, the passion of Kanye West. If that doesn't get you, I don't want to use the wrong words here, but if that doesn't get you upset, nothing has changed. Do we have an, he, He's on the Jesus tour right now, and on the Jesus tour, because he's Jesus, and his boy uh, Jay Z is, is Hova, Jehovah, so they're gods. And obviously they are because you're listening to them and you're buying their music and you're, and, and you're making them because I ain't buying their junk. So somebody's making them famous. So he has a Jesus tour now where he has an actor play Jesus in the tour, in the concert, and Jesus comes out on stage with them. And, and in one part they lift him up, all these naked women lift up Jesus. Come on, man. It's disgusting. Give me, give me another. What else do we got there? Eminem, oh, what a shock. Here, here goes the one eye start thing, the eye of Horus. We start to see how this shows up in every, every stinking artist. We got any other ones? Oh, man, not him. Bono, really? Go, move on. Oh, Beyonce, really? That's shocking. Move on. Move on. What is that? You know how he can do this? Look, look at this picture, man. Do we have any more? Oh, lady, lady, crazy head. Look, this is a baphomet. She had a baphomet, a goat head on her, and, and we don't even have to get into that one, right? Listen, all right, take a junk off. Listen, nothing has changed. The enemy still comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Nothing has changed. Listen, just like Ozzy Osbourne channeled spirits. Did you know that the, the, the Black Sabbath CD that he wrote, the name of his group, Black Sabbath, that it went like triple platinum? Why? A demon appeared to him. He, he says this. A demon appeared to him one night and told him and gave him all the lyrics to that CD or record back then. Gave him all the lyrics. He says through automatic writing. Gave him all the lyrics to the entire. He went and recorded it. Bam. Triple platinum. Channeled to him through a spirit. Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. Several spirits that tormented him but gave him all of the winning lyrics. Santana. Santana channels a spirit named Metronome. And he says he can't play the guitar without this spirit. Jimi Hendrix. He credits all his musical ability to a demon that would torment him day and night. His friends would find him in the mirror pulling, pulling pieces of his hair out because he was trying to get the demons out of his head. Michael Jackson. He couldn't, couldn't perform. Without these spirits. He said something would take over him. Beyonce channels a spirit named Sasha Fierce. She says, Sasha does things I would never do. <laughs> Nicki Minaj channels a spirit named Roman, who's an angry little boy, she says. And so whenever she's going to rap, whenever she gets quiet, you could watch it in interviews. And then, yo, man, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? She channels this spirit named Roman. She says Roman will say things she would never say. Adam Lambert, Rihanna, Ciara, Ace. Listen, watch this. Watch, this will scare you. This is a little even closer. We asked church kids this morning. We asked church kids this morning, what shows are on TV today? Let me give you a little bit of a listing that the church kids gave us. Wizards of Waverly Place. My Babysitter is a Vampire. Wolf Blood. Gravity Fall. That's a cartoon, by the way, that has a spell book with an Illuminati symbol in the front. House of Anubis. Anubis is a Greek, is a Greek name for a jackal-headed god. Associated with Egyptian religion. Shocking. TV shows, the originals, supernaturals, the vampire diaries, the witches of East End. That's our church kids telling us. That's your kids. That's our kids. J. 
Church, church, Ephesians 6, 12 says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the worship team, come, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. How can this same spirit from that time, from this guy was in the ninth, early 1900s, Alistair Crowley, how can he influence Led Zeppelin and those groups and then influence today Jay-Z and Kanye? How can that same influence go? Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against cosmic powers, rulers, and authorities over this present darkness. The Bible says Satan is the God of this world. Listen, these lamps behind me, I wanted you to have a picture. It's an illustration of how each and every one of us are so different. We come from different backgrounds, we're in different places, yet each of us is called to be light. You understand what I dropped on you today? It wasn't for shock and awe. It wasn't so you could say, oh, wow, that was, that was entertaining. Or that was, no. This should do something to you. This should challenge you. This should motivate you. Either your darkness or your light, the Bible says. So live as children of light. Amen? Amen. Now, some of you could say, man, you know, uh, that, that, I wasn't created to be a lamp. I'm not, that's for pastors. That's for church leaders. That's for evangelists. Surely those people, they were created to be light. They were built to be lights in this dark world. But guess what? I meant to go get this, but I got scared to take my wife to Ikea because we would have bought a lot more. <laughs> but Ikea sells these lamp kits. I love you, baby. I'll take you there tonight if you have to. <laughs> Ikea sells these lamp kits. And it's basically a wire with a light attached and a couple of clips. And anything you put the light inside becomes a lamp. Anything you put light inside becomes a light. So as we learn and grow and we believe on the word of God, it gets inside of us. Amen. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then later on it says, and the Word became flesh. And then it says, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Church, when we understand the light, when we accept the light, we become light. So all I wanted to do, I wanted to turn on the lights to expose these deeds of darkness. Somebody say amen. amen. Now the challenge is, what are you going to do about it? What do you do with it? Do we just go back next week? Oh, we worship, we go, we read a Bible passage, we're going to have some Christmas pageants, it's going to be so nice. But does something change inside you? Does something, does, does, I, I don't know about you, but when I learn something, I got to tell people about it. I might make people sick around me because when I learn something, I say, whoa, did you see it? Yeah, how about this? Boom, I break out pictures. When I learn something, I want people to know. Amen? And so I pray that that's the body of Christ that we're building here. I pray that when you learn something, you want somebody to know something. And I pray that when you, when you get on something, and, and I challenge you this too, don't just believe it because I said it. I could be a lunatic. Some of you think I am. But if I said it, check it. And if it's true, believe it. Amen? And if believe it, then walk like it. And if you walk like it, then act like it. And if it becomes yours, then let it be yours. And then you preach it like it's yours. And then you tell people like it's, you came up with it. Because you found out, you researched it, and it became something to you. Amen? Don't say, Pastor George, Pastor George, nothing. I... I found out and I learned something and the Spirit of God is going to show me some things. Amen? We're all ministers of light. All of us are ministers. I stand on this stage, but you could, you could stand on the stage that God puts you in. That's your job. That's your workplace. That's your friend's circle. That's your neighbor, your vecina. I thought somebody was trying to beat me up. So what's going on here? I'm ready for the attack. Come on. Come on. 
I've been, I feel like I was in the enemy's camp. I want to sing an 80s right back to the 70s song. I was in the enemy's camp and I stole back. I took back. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do that song. <laughs> but we did that. That's what we did the last three weeks. We went into the enemy's camp and we took it back and we put a light up in there. And we said, look, hell is ugly. This ain't pretty. People think it's all pretty and it's fun and it's do as thou wilt. It's ugly. Ugly. Everything comes with a price. But in the word, grace is free. Can we stand and worship together? Let's shake some of this off. Let's worship. We need to worship to break this nastiness off. Amen? Come on, do it, E. Yeah, 
Father, and we worshiped you this morning, oh God, so that that ground, Father, that was once rocky, Father, was tilled, oh God, so that when this word, this word was planted in good soil, you, oh God, and I'm believing, Father, for it to continue to grow in the hearts and the lives of your people, oh God. So, Father, we release your people here this morning, oh God. We release them into this place, oh God. And we pray, Lord, that all that you have taught, Father, Lord, those, Father, that have graduated today, Father, those that have passed tests today, Father, Lord, that their testimony would be something powerful, oh God, Father, that would bring others to the saving knowledge of who you are and what you're continuing to do, oh God. So, Father, we thank you for shining a light, for turning a light on, oh God. We thank you, oh God. That we don't have to live in darkness or even in the fear of darkness, oh God. But we live, Father, by every word, Father, that comes from your mouth, oh God. So we release your people, Father, in love and in peace and in unity. You guys are blessed. Continue to be a blessing to those that you come in contact the rest of, the rest of this week. Hallelujah. Don't make this the only day you... Plug in to God. Plug in each and every day. Hallelujah. You guys are dismissed. God bless you.